Hello, Jeff Crane here reviewing Chapter 3 of the IV text entitled Attending Behavior and Empathy. Attending behavior and empathy are critical if you're going to establish a working relationship with your client. By way of example, Michael Lambert published in 1992 found that 30% of successful therapy can be attributed to common factors such as empathy and the therapeutic relationship. And that's significant. That means if you're going to commit to providing success, successful therapy, you have to commit to being empathetic and establishing a therapeutic relationship. The authors of this text say you will have achieved the goals described in this chapter when you can establish an empathetic relationship, really listen to your clients, are aware of what you're doing and when you do it, and can adapt in ways that suit your client. Additionally, you will learn what to do if you get lost or confused in the session, which, by the way, can happen to the best of counselors. And last, attending and empathy will be described from the point of view of neuroscience. Just what is attending behavior? It means paying attention to what you say and how you say it. It means paying attention to your body language and vocal tone. It means doing everything you can to be present to your client in such a way that you optimize the likelihood of engaging in a meaningful therapeutic relationship. While there are different ways to attend, the most important and critical skill is to listen. As the authors say, listening is more than hearing or seeing. The counselor who truly listens is doing much more than simply listening. While they listen, they work to understand why the client is saying what he or she is saying and feel the emotions behind the words. All of us have had the experience of not being listened to. In this video clip we have an example of a woman who just wants to be heard. It also demonstrates the difficulty of listening, especially when the listener believes that he or she has the right answer. It's just, there's all this pressure, you know? And sometimes it feels like it's right up on me and I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless and I don't know if it's going to stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever going to stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there... Stop trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing... You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. No, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, you're out. not even listening now. Okay, fine. I will listen. Fine. It's just... Sometimes it's like there's this achy... I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. Yeah, I, that sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Oh, come on. Ow. If you would just don't. Try to see things my way. Do I have to keep on talking till I can go? It's hard to listen when we think we have the answer. And even though that guy had the answer, what he needed to do was listen. That woman in particular needs to feel heard before she's going to be open to any suggestions from that guy. In this instance, it doesn't matter what, that he's right. What matters is that she feels heard. If you attend, you can expect that your client will speak more freely respond more openly, and demonstrate to you visually that they are more comfortable talking with you. Among the things that connects you to your client is your attention. So pay attention. And remember, it's not about you or how smart you are. It's about them. Your training and all your learning is about this moment. It's about you being present to him or her and really paying attention.
If you do it right, you will be encouraging your client to talk. If you don't, you will be discouraging them. Additionally, an important upside is modeling for them an important social skill, how to improve and build relationships by really listening. Once you learn how to listen, listen more. This is because the most frequent mistake of the beginning counselor is offering advice too soon. Many times, if the client is given the opportunity to talk about his or her problem, they'll figure out a solution. Remember the earlier statistic? 30% of successful therapeutic outcomes can be explained by a counselor who is empathetic and listens. While in session, be sure to slow down, relax, and listen to what your client is saying. Alan Ivey talks about the three V's plus B. The first V stands for visual or eye contact. The second V stands for vocal qualities. The third V stands for verbal tracking. And the B stands for body language. Be aware of how you use eye contact. There are cultural differences as well as personality or developmental differences. Sustained eye contact can be experienced as aggressive. For some people, like those with autism, direct eye contact is painfully uncomfortable. Sometimes you can encourage greater conversation by having less eye contact. Maintain eye contact. Sounds so simple, right? Wrong! Because effectively utilizing eye contact as a communication tool takes skill and finesse in order to do it right. And so today we're going to go over some simple eye contact tips. It really comes down to striking the perfect balance between maintaining eye contact and breaking gaze every once in a while. Because we get uncomfortable when you're talking to somebody who just locks and loads. Yeah. Everybody's talked to the dude who won't break gaze. This is weird, uncomfortable, and a little creepy. Common sense would tell you that eye contact, all eye contact is good. But if you ever talk to that guy who takes eye contact to a whole nother level of intensity, you know there can definitely be too much of a good thing. But on the communication flip side, if you're talking to somebody and they're looking everywhere except at you, there are all sorts of red flags going up. You tend not to trust them. So as you can see, there is a delicate balance that needs to take place. So now, without any further ado, let's go over some eye contact tips. Tip number one, when you are the one speaking and you're talking to one person, eye contact, meaning like holding a gaze, should only last between five and 10 seconds. Anything longer than 10 seconds tends to make people feel a little bit uncomfortable. All right, you can time yourself in the mirror if you wanna figure out what 10 seconds feels like. But all you need to do is break gaze for just a second and come back. It's this little break, either up to the left, down to the right, wherever you wanna look, all right? that is going to make the conversation feel a little bit better. It still lets the person know that you are talking to them and communicating to them, but it's not quite so intense. Tip number two, if you're speaking to multiple people or a group or an audience, you wanna make sure that you don't stick on one person for more than two to three seconds, all right? Because if you just stay and you focus on one person like your mom in the audience, talk just to her or deliver the speech to her, everybody else in the room is gonna feel left out. I would constantly be moving adjusting all right a nice smooth transition is great looking people in the eye don't hold any one person's gaze too long two to three seconds max tip number three when you are the one listening right you're talking to one person or one person is talking to you same five to ten second rule applies all right i want you to still break gaze but when you break i want you to include something like a hmm hmm mm hmm or a little bit of a nod, right? You're like, mm-hmm, yeah, makes sense, right? Because even though you're not looking at them, you're letting the person know that is communicating to you that indeed you're paying attention. How do I look? When I'm looking at you, do I look happy? Do I look like I love you? Or do I look like I'm pissed off? Exactly, pissed off. Or how about this one, right? Exactly, I look like I'm into you, I'm digging you, right? 
because with eye contact, it's not just the eyes that need to be focused on the individual or person, it's also what's going on up here. Pay attention to what your eyes and your eyebrows are saying because we do so much communication, not just with our eyes or with our mouth, but our facial expressions are going to be a big deal and have a lot to do with how we are actually being received. So you can be looking at somebody, but if you're looking at them and they can tell like, oh, I think this dude is going to punch me, that is absolutely wrong. And tip number five, when you are talking to somebody or somebody is talking to you and you break gaze, the place that you should not direct your eyes is towards your phone because there is nothing worse than talking to somebody who keeps looking away and looking at their phone. It absolutely lets you know that they are not paying attention to you and more interested than what's going on on their phone. So when you're having a conversation, the best idea is to actually put your phone in your pocket or in your bag, get it off the table because even if you inadvertently glance down and I'm thinking, yo, he wouldn't, he's got a text he needs to answer. Am I boring you? I'm sorry that I'm taking up your time. Go ahead, grab it. I don't care. I'm done here anyway. Gentlemen, eye contact. It is a critical component of the communication process. Knowing how to maintain it, but knowing when and how to break gaze is equally as important as actually looking somebody in the eye. Because like we demonstrated, like you know, because you've talked to them, you know what it feels like when you're talking to somebody who you can't shake, right? Uh-huh. Don't be that guy. Gentlemen, eye contact. It's a critical component of the communication equation.